So hello friends and welcome to this EMR rounds and today we will look at a patient who I saw a couple of days back. He's a 66 year old male presenting to us with complaints of right eye defective vision for the past six months. Okay, for past six months. And he underwent right eye eye surgery 10 years back. He says that he underwent surgeries twice. Why? Because first time the intraocular lens was not placed and after three months he was placed the IOL okay we never know for what reasons maybe some complication might have happened during the surgery so for which he underwent a secondary IOL procedure after three months as far as his left eye is concerned he underwent left eye IOL surgery three months back so this is the complete history of this patient so he's presenting with a chronic defective vision okay on examination Okay, there was a nasal pterygium on the cornea encroaching it's G1, T1 grade. Not our concern. Climate droplet keratopathy or oil droplet keratopathy, which is nothing but some age related changes on the cornea. Again, not our concern. But our concern is going to be focused on the central part of cornea where there were multiple small bubbles, small drops. They're nothing but microcystic epithelial edema was noted. Okay, so centrally, microcystic epithelial edema was there, and there was one more. There was a small, uh, a larger, I would say, a larger translucent bubble like bulla, an epithelial bulla was noted. So there were epithelial edema and there was epithelial bullae. Okay, right. So on the iris, I was able to see one suture was noted. And there was a PC IOL behind, which means that an iris fixated IOL has been done for this patient. Right from a history, we are very clear that the patient underwent a secondary IOL procedure. So it's an iris fixated IOL. So what is the proposed pathology for this patient? The patient had underwent a secondary IOL procedure. Probably because of the suture placed on the iris, there could have been a chronic inflammation. Or we never know, the patient might have had some vitreous in AC as well. So both these conditions has led to chronic inflammation in the anterior chamber and the presence of probable vitreous, presence of the AC inflammation has affected the endothelium of the cornea causing an endothelial dysfunction leading on to a corneal decompensation which means that the endothelium has lost its ability to protect or to prevent water entering into cornea. So the cornea has lost its ability to maintain the transparency this is what he calls a pseudophagic bullous keratopathy okay now the story doesn't end here some of you might have seen pseudophagic bullous keratopathy on one eye the other eye the patient is having an IOL so we might be carried away with this but always always remember look what is on the left eye especially if the left eye is going to be having fakia which means the patient is going to have a lens inside but in our patient, there was PC IOL. Still, when I note it, apart from the IOL here, on the cornea, I was able to see very, very important findings. Some dew drop or droplet accumulations were noted on the endothelium, to be more specific, on the decimates membrane, right? Which is nothing but corneal gutte or corneal guttata. These corneal guttata are telltale sign of fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy so on one eye the patient is having a pseudophagic bullous keratopathy on the other eye he is having corneal gutte which can again lead on to corneal endothelial decompensation okay so always make sure you look at this very very important finding the copper beaten appearance of the endothelium which is very classic in corneal gutte now we will have the discussion of Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy in the next EMR round. So, for today, we will focus on the pseudophagic bullous keratopathy. Now, let's go for the eagle eyes view. Bullous keratopathy can be either post-surgical bullous keratopathy or a phakic bullous keratopathy. Right? Post-surgical can be pseudophagic, can be a phakic. What do you mean by pseudophagic? There is a PC IOL and there is a bullous keratopathy. So, the question arises why the patient should end up with a bullous keratopathy. The reasons or the causes can be three ways it can happen. It can either have pre-op, intra-op or post-op. 
pre op even before you operate for a patient always look for three important findings look for gutte which is implicated in fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy the patient underwent left eye cataract surgery just 3 or 4 months back from our history and the surgeon should have noted the patient having corneal gutte that's very important second always look for intraocular inflammation look for presence of keratic precipitates look for presence of px for a pseudo exfoliation material on the endothelium so kp's gutte and pxf when you going to note on the endothelium of the cornea always look for them and you should be very very careful in handling that cornea of the patient you should prevent any endothelial damage during surgery therefore give enough dispersive viscoelastic dispersive viscoelastic so as to protect the endothelium of the cornea during surgery right so this is what you have to go for the pre op considerations now why the patient can have pbk because of some intraop problems or intraop manipulation so it can be either phaco related which means related to the surgical technique itself or it can be iol related as far as iol is concerned whenever you're going to place an anterior chamber iol that can increase the risk of bullous keratopathy presence of an anterior chamber iol can directly damage the endothelium that is one thing secondary iol in iris fixed iol chronic post op inflammation can also cause pbk coming to the phaco related or cataract technique related whenever you going to apply more energy while doing phaco emulsification the heat dissipation can damage the endothelium increase in aspiration flow rate any retained alien matter could be a retained cortex retained viscoelastics especially when you going to use viscoelastics and if you do not fail to uh, and if you do not remove the viscoelastic after surgery that can cause problems presence of vitreous very very important which is a probable case in our patient for example a pcr or posterior capsular rentus occurred as a result of which vitreous kind of extruding into the ac presence of vitreous in ac another very important risk factor for pbk okay as you can see in this picture there is a pc dehiscence or a pc tear or a pc rent as a result of vitreous as kind of seeps through presence in the ac can affect the endothelium too much irrigating fluids is again one of the reasons why the patient can end up with pbk therefore always use balanced salt solution plus an ideal irrigating fluid to use to avoid or to prevent pbk and technique wise whenever you're going to operate patient for a long time yes there is a chance the patient can have pbk so a faster safer or efficient surgery will reduce the chance for pbk so now you know why pbk occurs let us look at the exact pathophysiology the formation of bullae the formation of epithelial edema why should it happen in the first place like in our patient now the key word is endothelial cell loss remember endothelial cell loss that's the most important word to remember why endothelium Uh, cell is being lost it's because of endothelial damage because of the aforementioned conditions okay so whenever the endothelial cells are going to get reduced less than 500 to 600 cells per, per mm square so this 500 to 600 is going to be the is like the is like the cut off less than 500 or 600 the patient can have pleomorphism or polymegathism of endothelium pleomorphism is abnormal shape of endothelium polymegathism is the endothelium is going to um, grow further extend further to compensate for the lost ones okay so pleomorphism polymegathism both can lead to inefficient function of the endothelium so loss of endothelial cell function and that is what we call as endothelial or a corneal decompensation so what happens when endothelium is lost see endothelium acts like a barrier it will only let only certain fluids only certain amount of uh you know substances to go from the anterior chamber into the cornea so as the cornea should be transparent cornea should be in a state of relative dehydration very very important okay when the endothelium is going to lose its function then what happens the sodium potassium atps pump will lose its function therefore the water is going to enter into the cornea so when the wall is broken water is entering into the cornea so when the water enters what happens the cornea is going to lose its transparency the first what happens 
there's going to be thickness of decimates membrane especially the posterior non banded decimate membrane going to get thickened there's going to be formation of dm folds decimate membrane folds the water enters the stroma there's going to be a stromal edema eventually stromal edema can lead on to a stromal scarring and defective vision very important now as the inflammation is going to progress the edema is going to progress okay what happens then it goes to the epithelium and that is why our patient had microcystic epithelial edema and sometimes this epithelial edema or the sub epithelial edema can coalesce can join to form a raised structure called as bulla bulla or a bulle is the plural form when this epithelial or sub epithelial bulla is going to rupture that can cause three important clinical features pain photophobia and defective vision pain is very very characteristic why pain because when the bulla ruptures it is going to expose the nerve endings the exposure of nerve endings can cause pain and the classic description is pain on waking up why waking up when the eyelid is closed there is no evaporation of the tear film so there is going to be more edema of the cornea so the moment the patient is going to open his or her eyes that is going to expose the nerve endings that is going to cause more pain for the patient okay very very important why pain on waking up in bullous keratopathy is a very important question you will ask in exams second photophobia you know why photophobia because of a corneal any corneal pathology and epithelial defect can lead on to photophobia defective vision occurs because of a progressive subepithelial scarring or fibrosis similar to stromal scarring okay defective vision is very very common like in our patient so this is the reason why you experience these set of problems in pseudophagic bullous keratopathy this is the classic picture of pseudophagic bullous keratopathy you can see the bullae here you can see how translucent they are how clear crystal like bullae elevations are noted you can see microcystic epithelial edema also can be seen multiple small droplets can be seen on the epithelium so how to treat this patient now we know that the patient has landed up in pseudophagic bullous keratopathy there are two modes you can either go for a medical management or a surgical management medical management you can give sodium chloride sodium chloride 5% sodium chloride 5% is going to extract the water out of cornea okay extract the water out of cornea it's called hypertonic solutions what you call hypertonic solution it is going to extract the water beta blockers can be given to reduce the edema can reduce the edema by reduce by the reduction of intraocular pressure you can also give bandage contact lenses especially if going to, the patient going to have a painful condition when the bullet has been ruptured exposing the nerve endings you can give a bandage contact lens always avoid two piece avoid prostaglandin analog avoid pilocarpin when you give these two piece that can itself cause inflammation that can worsen the condition for our patient as for a surgery is concerned the gold standard is going to be corneal transplantation is the gold standard procedure very very important okay so an easy way to remember the surgical procedures are a b c d a for amniotic membrane transplant because the amniotic membrane can give growth factors that can promote epithelialization that can prevent the formation of bullae so amt is the first thing second you can go for a bowman's cautery third collagen cross linking the the treatment what we use in keratoconus collagen cross linking will strengthen the bond of the cornea therefore it can prevent the formation of bullae and rupture again conjunctival flap of gunderson or gunderson's flap can be used something which is very much similar to an amt where you where you you know place another flap so that you prevent or you prevent the formation of bullae you prevent exposure of corneal nerve endings come into the gold standard you can either go for a penetrating keratoplasty if there is going to be a stromal scarring when you have to do a full thickness corneal graft if not if not if the only endothelium is going to be problematic you can go for a decimate stripping automated endothelial keratoplasty can be done only the endothelium is being replaced lastly it's going to be the photo therapeutic keratectomy by lasers you are trying to heal this so easy to remember is a b c d and add phototherapeutic keratectomy 
some numbers to note are at birth the endothelial cell count is going to be 7500 cells as we progress to adult we become uh, the endothelial cell count becomes to 2500 the percentage of loss per year is going to be 0.5 percentage per year and note very very important less than 600 or less than 500 the risk of coronary edema is going to be there so what are take home messages always look at the affected eye look at the affected eye if the patient have an iol see where the iol has been placed is it a sulcus placement or anterior chamber placement or is it a secondary iol if the patient is aphakic or not very important again aphakia the more risk of vitreous to come to the ac more chance of corneal decompensation and always look for the presence of vitreous very very important but don't get carried away by looking only at the affected eye look at the other eye even though the other eye could be pseudophakic always look for gutte look for pxf look for kps especially if the patient going to have these three conditions the risk of endothelial damage is going to be more and if the patient is going to have cataract in the other eye you should be very very precautions should be taken before you operate that patient so that ends with the emr rounds that is sudofikic bullous keratopathy in next lecture we will discuss about the fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy so thank you so much bye bye